Using photographic filters can enhance your photography tremendously, but you've got to use them appropriately. This one here is a neutral density grad, so you can put this darker area over the sky to make the sky darker. I use filters occasionally in my work, but I'm not an expert with it. So I thought for the purposes of this exercise, it would be worth speaking to somebody who is. This is Tom Mackey. He is one of the few photographers who actually does live the dream and travel all over this amazing world and take beautiful photographs of it. He also keeps cheese in his camera bag. He can't help it. Can he? <laughs> <laughs> he gave me some earlier. It was good. Yes. So Tom, we've already talked about this pier and the, the, the kind of rigidity of the structure and the composition we can get with these piles in here. But we're going to do something with a neutral density filter, which cuts light out. Why would someone want to do such a stupid thing as remove light from their photograph? It does seem very strange to want to do that, but you can create some very, very interesting effects by um, using long exposures, such as two, three minutes. When you've got something like this, you've got the, the water going in and out, you can get some really nice, really surreal effects. Excellent. That sounds like fun. Okay. Let's go and give it a go. Let's try it. I'll on. grab your bag. Thank you. I might eat your cheese. No. <laughs> To demonstrate this neutral density effect, we're going to use a really, really powerful neutral density filter. We're going to go to the extreme and not just do it a little bit, so you really get what we're on about. Tom has got here what Lee called their big stopper. This stops 10 stops of light. That means it's 20 times darker than it actually is here. Can I borrow that? Yeah, sure. Take a look at this. If I just bring this over, put it in front of the lens, it's gone dark. There is light getting in through there, but very, very little light. So therefore, you've got to use a very, very slow exposure. Tom, talk us through how you calculate this exposure. OK, now the first thing you need to do is to determine your normal exposure. So we'll go ahead and do that. Do a shot here. OK, now that's roughly about an eighth of a second. So. The other thing we need to do is shut the autofocus off because with this in place, the camera is going to try to focus and it's not going to see anything. So it's going to go out of focus if you don't uh, turn it off. So let's switch this to manual focus. OK, now we'll put this into place with the foam edge towards the lens. Yep. So that seals the light so there's no light getting in around here. OK? Now we're going to set our Set it to bulb. OK, got that. Bulb means that the shutter stays open until you tell it to close. OK, now, to determine the uh, correct exposure for this, Lee give you this nice little guide, exposure guide. So we look on here and we see an eighth. Right. We need to use two minutes with the big stopper. Okay. So that means your exposure has gone from an eighth of a second, which is really quick. It's kind of like click like that, and it's, it's an eighth of a second to two clicks. The first click when your shutter opens to the second click when it closes is a two minute gap. So you need something to do in between times. Yeah. OK. OK, so we're all set up. You've got your filter in place, the composition set on a tripod. You could right. never do this without a tripod. Don't even consider it and use a nice, nice sturdy one. And we're going to use a cable release so we're not touching the camera. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and put that in, lock it in. OK. And now we just two literally minutes. look at the watch and count two minutes. Now we've got to do is kill time. What should we do? Mm -hmm. Go for a walk with some cheese. Should be about cooked. Let's have a look. Hang on. Hey, hey, hey. Get it right. Okay. Two minutes. There. Let's have a look. All right. Let's have a look. See what we've got. Lovely. That is great. Now, what's going on here is these pillars, these these uprights. They're all standing completely still, and so it makes no difference that the shutter's open for two minutes because they're not going anywhere. The water is rippling around and sort of bubbling about 
and that is blurring. For two minutes, that water's been doing its thing, and the long, slow shutter speed has let that blur onto the sensor. So you get this lovely, ethereal kind of, I don't know, almost ghostliness about the water. And that is what I mean about appropriate use of filters can really give your photography the edge.